Hi friends, Peter Uzelak, the Embryo MD here. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about answering the following question that I had posed to me this week, which is at what point in the process of IVF do we identify if eggs are mature or immature? And let me put some context to that. So we're talking about human eggs or oocytes, and we're talking about someone that would be going through an IVF process. And as you may be familiar with during the IVF process, the first goal is to acquire as many eggs as possible all at one time. So that requires something called ovarian stimulation. It takes about 10 days to two weeks, and then eggs are removed from the ovary, and then they go into the IVF process in the laboratory. So what exact point do we know what's going on in terms of the maturity? So during the egg retrieval procedure, normally there's an embryologist in attendance to the surgical procedure, either in the same room or in an adjacent room, and that embryologist is receiving from the procedure test tubes full of what we call aspirates. And those are the follicular fluid, the fluid that's inside the follicles where the eggs are residing. And so that fluid is put underneath a microscope for examination. And in the fluid, you can then identify the eggs. Here's our embryologist looking through the microscope. She's in the procedure room. You can see there that the environment is isolated just to the left of that isolate where she's working, you can see what's going on under the microscope. So that is the contours of a Petri dish magnified. What she's doing is going through and identifying any possible eggs in that aspirate or that fluid. And you might see some other cellular debris, that's normal. You might see pieces of those cumulus cells, those surrounding supportive cells, that's all very normal there's one big piece of cumulus, it looks clear, no egg inside of it. So we're still on the search for an egg. And here's a nice picture of some eggs put to the side in that Petri dish. And they don't really look like a round cell, do they? They just, they just look like a kind of a clump of cells. That's probably the most interesting observation when you're first witnessing this. You wouldn't think that it's an egg cell because you're looking for something round, but the egg cell's in there. It's just hidden kind of underneath these supportive cells. Now at that point there, you would be able to identify an egg, but you don't know what the state of that egg is. So there's something that we're referring to here called maturity. You can also have an empty shell, so there's no egg inside the actual shell. You can also have just abnormally looking eggs, but you wouldn't know any of that at that point in time. What has to happen next is the egg has to go into the laboratory and undergo some further processing before you would ever know the maturity status of that egg. Now, eggs can be fertilized in one of two different ways. They can undergo a procedure called ICSI, I-C-S-I, where they would undergo some processing to be able to receive a sperm mechanically one at a time, so one egg, one sperm kind of situation, or they can undergo what's known commonly as conventional insemination, where an egg or a group of eggs would be exposed to a large number of sperm, and the fertilization process would be something more akin to what happens naturally in the fallopian tube. So on the former ICSI, that provides a window of opportunity to look at the maturation status immediately when the eggs are retrieved from the ovaries because again there's some further processing that goes along with ICSI in preparation and what happens is a procedure known as denuding denuding the egg so an egg is a single cell and it's surrounded by many supportive cells called cumulus cells on the outside of that single cell and so when it's identified initially in the procedure room, it just looks like a kind of clump of cells. You can't really distinguish it unless you have a really well-trained eye that it's just a single cell in the middle of those clumps of cells. And so in the laboratory, be prior to a mechanical fertilization with ICSI, we would take off those supporting cells. And so we denude it down just to that solitary egg cell, which is again, just a singular circular cell structure. And at that point, you could actually see the nucleus because there's no outside cells obstructing that. 
view. And so you could actually see the nuclear status of the egg. In fact, we should clarify when we're talking about maturity, we're not talking about the whole egg. We're really talking specifically about the nucleus, the nucleus, because what's happening before that egg comes out, right before it's right before it comes out, is it's going through a series of transitions in the nucleus to get ready to be able to fertilize. So this is happening naturally before an egg is expulsed from an ovary. And it's also happening in the IVF process where a medication commonly known as the trigger shot is taking that egg and at the nuclear level, it's releasing it into a series of steps to get ready to receive a sperm. And that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about maturation, it's nuclear maturation. So when we denude the egg cells, we can now see under the microscope and you can look for something very specific that tells you whether the egg is mature or not. And there's basically three divisions of maturity and we'll classify those as completely immature. And that's the state the egg would be in for most of its life. It would be an immature egg and not until the very end where it sees that surge naturally or it sees that trigger shot will it actually leave that immature state. Then there's a transitional egg. We refer that to that as a M1 or metaphase one egg. And that would be something that would be on its way to maturing. So we know that it receives some signal because it got on its way to maturing, but it's not fully ready to receive a sperm yet. And then finally we'll go to a fully mature. And that, that egg looks like a very distinct pattern where you would have a polar body that is visible on the periphery of the egg which is representing what the egg had to do. So its job is to get rid of half of its chromosomes, half of its nuclear material, so it can get ready to receive half from the sperm. So really what's happening there is the egg is going through its final steps of what we term meiosis, which is the reduction of your DNA, basically bringing it down to half, so then the sperm could be received. And that's really what we're talking about. When we say immature or mature, Immature means it hasn't gone through that change. Mature means it has and it's ready. It's been prepared and it's ready to receive that sperm. Now, we don't know what it looks like if we don't denude those cells off. So if we're doing something like conventional fertilization, we will not know the status of that egg. We will never know that until the next day. So let's get back to our original question. When do we know if it's mature or not? Well, it depends on how we're fertilizing. So if we're doing ICSI, We'll know within a few hours, just within a few hours of the procedure, uh, we're usually taking those supportive cells off and we are then finding out if it's mature or not and only the mature ones could be fertilized or sometimes we refer to that as injected with the sperm through the ICSI procedure. Not until the next day, not until the next day do we know whether a conventionally fertilized egg made it or not, whether fertilized for one thing, but also we would know more about whether that egg was ever mature to begin with at that point. Okay, other things we can find out, they're not all one of those three buckets, immature, transitional, mature. Sometimes we'll see just a blank, there's no egg, it's an, called an empty zona. Sometimes we'll see a clearly abnormal egg morphologically. So that means that just like looking at it, we know it's not normal. Examples of that would be a giant egg. So it's clearly not a typical size. Another example of that would be one that would be highly vacuolated. So it has a cystic appearance to it. We know that's associated with abnormalities. Another one would be it's just frankly dark, a dark egg, what would be associated with some kind of post-maturity event or some kind of significant egg quality problem. So normally an egg should look kind of shiny or glossy. That's how we sometimes describe that under the microscope. So I hope you found that useful. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up on this video. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Embryo MD.